So my name is Phelim Harty. I'm here in Skerries at the Skerries Eco Festival. What I've been talking today um, about is stormwater and stormwater management. And there's a number of distinct elements to it. And one is that we want to catch the water as it falls and lands on the street surfaces and hold on to that to ease up flooding, to ease up droughts, that type of thing. But also there's the filtration element. We want to get the water as clean as possible as it moves from the streetscapes into the rivers and streams. There was a question about the sports ground and the sports ground being raised up. Mm -hmm. If you can manage to have no net movement of soil in or out of the site, so utilize some of the soil that's there, dig it out of one area to make a sunken area, mm -hmm. and move it up onto another area to make that ground drier. Mm -hmm. From the water's point of view, it's got pretty much the same storage volume then. And one of the main things to bear in mind is if you're removing plants from a pond, to limit it to about one third of the area in any given year. Don't remove more than one third in a given season, because otherwise you're removing too much habitat space. Okay. Why would you remove? Mm -hmm. Why would you remove the uh, plant? Well, well, further down you can see that it's after encroaching quite a lot. And it just means that what's happening at the moment is that there's a natural movement from pond to fen to bog. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, bulrush is an amazing fen building plant. It tends to grow out into the water, falls down, regrows again. And so as it does so, it'll cover the area of vegetation. That eventually fills in and becomes fen peat, and that eventually naturally becomes a raised bog. That's yeah. the, the natural yeah. movement. Or the scrub encroaches from the edge and it becomes a wet woodland and then woodland habitat. Yeah. And so that's a natural process. But if you want to have a pond here uh, for yeah. aesthetic reasons mm. and for the habitat that yeah. ponds provide, mm. then kind of stalling evolution. And the other is biodiversity and also climate. And by putting in stormwater wetlands, stormwater ponds, we can deal with all of those things and begin to improve the environment on multiple different levels, really, all by holding onto stormwater as it flows, filtering it, improving the quality, and storing it so that we don't get our, our flooding and our drought cycle, and generally making the streetscape a, a greener and happier place for pollinators while filtering the water and moving it on into the wider environment. I wonder, oh, this is sealed at the top. If for a tank that's sealed at the top, this design I think is probably fine. If your tank is open at the top, this diverter actually needs to be leveled at the top of the pipe, at the top of the tank, or a little bit below it, so that when the water comes down, it fills up the tank, preferentially, but when the tank is full, this then overflows back down into the gutter. Because this is a sealed tank, it's absolutely fine, but if it was open, as I say, this design would mean that the tank would overflow and this would cease to come into effect unless there's very heavy rainfall that actually bypasses this completely.